thank you for joining me today for the session. Uh, my name is Zishan, and I work as a cloud data engineer with Google based out of the San Francisco office. And uh, in my current role, we help uh, enterprises that move to Google Cloud to design their uh, data architecture and pipelines. And a very common topic that often uh, we come across uh, when we are building streaming pipelines is uh, the origin of duplicates and how they can be handled. So uh, in this talk, I'll give an overview of places where duplicates may appear and what are the features and functionalities that PubSub, Dataflow, and the Apache Beam SDK provides for you to handle such duplicates. And feel free to um, ask any questions over Slack or the chat. So let's look at what a streaming pipeline looks like on GCP, a typical streaming pipeline. So typically, uh, you would have um, a source system that will be generating some messages, a stream of data. And then these messages uh, have to be published to Cloud PubSub using a publisher client. So this could be an application or a VM that is responsible for publishing these messages to Cloud PubSub. And then once these messages are in Cloud PubSub, they can be ingested by Dataflow for any data processing, enrichment, and then it can be written to BigQuery. Now, as this uh, data moves from your source system to the sinks, there are, there are several places where you may see duplicates. And in the next few slides, I'll actually go into uh, each of these places on why they appear and how they are being handled. So if you see the numbers in the red box, uh, one, two, three, four, five, these are the five places where duplicates may appear. So the first is uh, your source system itself produces duplicates. The second place is when we are publishing to Cloud PubSub. The third is when we are reading from Cloud PubSub. Fourth is when we are doing any processing in Dataflow. And the fifth is when we are writing to a sync, uh, for example, BigQuery. So let's go at the first place where you may see duplicates. So uh, this, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, your source system itself um, may generate uh, duplicates. Now, uh, these systems could be your IoT devices or applications uh, that are uh, generating these messages. And because of some network error or just an error in the system, uh, it may produce uh, duplicate records. So that's the first place where duplicates may originate. And this, this is what we call as source-generated duplicates. Now, uh, before actually moving to the other few places where duplicates may appear, I just wanted to touch upon how any message in PubSub looks like so that we are familiar with the terminology that we will use in the rest of the slides. So when we read from uh, PubSub IO, each message uh, is an object of the PubSub message class, which has a structure like this. There are five fields. Uh, the main field uh, is the data where your message payload is uh, stored. So whatever message you publish to PubSub, uh, this is the place uh, where your payload is stored. Um, then uh, you have another field called attributes, uh, which is an optional field, uh, and it is a string key value pairs that you can set uh, when you are publishing to Cloud PubSub. So you can think of them as some metadata or tags that you want to attach to each message uh, and use it for for variety of purposes. So maybe you can have a unique identifier as an attribute. Uh, you can have the event timestamp as an attribute. Essentially, any string key value pair, um, you can attach it as an attribute uh, when you are publishing to PubSub. So this always has to be set when you are doing the publishing, uh, at the time of publishing. Now, uh, the other two very critical pieces are the message ID and the publish timestamp. So these two fields are populated by PubSub service uh, when the message is published to the topic. Uh, and uh, both of them are something that is assigned by the PubSub service, and developers have no control over it. So you cannot set a message ID or you cannot set a message, uh, a published timestamp. The message ID is the uh, is a unique identifier that the PubSub service gives to any message in a topic. So this is the way through which PubSub uniquely identifies each message. Uh, and there's an ordering key of uh, messages have to be read in some order, for example, in PubSub Lite. Uh, 
So now let's go to the second place where we may see duplicates. So the second place is uh, when we are publishing to uh, PubSubs. So this happens when uh, the publisher client uh, is making a request to PubSub to publish these messages. Now, uh, publisher client uh, consider, considers each message as successfully published when it gets an acknowledge, acknowledgement by the PubSub service. And uh, PubSub service assigns a message ID and a timestamp and then sends an acknowledgement back that, yes, this message is successfully persisted and stored in the topic and it's acknowledged. However, for some reasons, uh, that acknowledgement may not be received within a deadline. And uh, if your publisher client is configured to uh, retry publishing to prevent any data loss, um, then in that case, uh, you would end up with some duplicates. So let's just uh, give a small example on how uh, this would typically look like. So let's say you make a request, uh, the publisher client makes a request to PubSub to publish the topic, uh, to publish to a topic. The message was stored in PubSub. The PubSub then gives an acknowledgement back, but then uh, because of some network failure or error, the acknowledgement was not received by the publisher client. So the publisher client thinks that this message is not delivered and it will retry to publish this message again to PubSub. Now, let's say in the second try, uh, the message uh, was again stored in PubSub, acknowledgement was sent, but this time the acknowledgement was successfully received by the publisher client. So in this scenario, what happens is that we ended up publishing the same message twice, and both these message will have different message IDs. So for Cloud PubSub as a system, these are two independent messages because they have different message IDs. So this is a place where uh, what we call as a publisher generated duplicates, uh, where you may see duplicates manifest. Now let's look at um, the third place. So this is when uh, we are reading from PubSub. So PubSub offers an at least once delivery. So this means that the same message can be delivered more than once on the same subscription. Um, and it is a responsibility of the uh, subscribing system to be able to handle these duplicates. So if we are, um, see, if, if, if you're talking about a streaming pipeline that's uh, that's built using PubSum data flow, your um, subscriber essentially, essentially is the data flow workers. So, um, uh, and then we also know that uh, each uh, PubSub message also has a unique identifier called the message ID. So when we are reading from PubSub in Dataflow, Dataflow is actually able to uh, leverage this message ID to do a default deduplication. Um, so duplicates that are arising from at least once delivery of PubSub, uh, if you are using the PubSub IO to read uh, these messages, are being taken care of by default uh, for you. So there is a default deduplication that is happening uh, within Dataflow for you to uh, eliminate duplicates that are arising from this scenario at, that is at least once delivery of PubSub. Uh, and I also want to mention that there's uh, no time window for this deduplication. Uh, so uh, if in a pipeline anywhere there is a redelivery of the same message ID, then in that case, uh, Dataflow will filter out the uh, filter it filter out such duplicates and not let them move down the pipeline. So this is uh, the third place where duplicates may appear, and uh, I talked about like if you're using the PubSub IO, uh, this is being handled by for you by default. Now um, the third place is when you are doing any processing in Dataflow. So as we know, Dataflow is a distributed processing platform, and for uh, high reliability, messages may mess messages may be reprocessed multiple times. However, Dataflow has um, checkpointing in place and ensures only one of these retries wins and goes down the pipeline. So uh, Dataflow as a system guarantees exactly one's processing, but this do this does not mean that retries don't happen and the um, yeah, so this doesn't mean that the retries don't happen, but there are mechanisms in place in Dataflow that prevents uh, these multiple retries actually going downstream in the pipeline. 
And there is also a, a, a three series blog post that uh, we have published on this uh, that it goes into detail how Dataflow achieves these things and makes sure that um, only one of these tries actually moves downstream in the pipeline. So for duplicates, if, if, if you're wondering that, you know, can Dataflow itself produce duplicates because, because of distributed nature of the processing? The answer is no, that is not going to happen. Uh, but this does not mean that retries don't happen. Retries happens, but only one of those retries actually win and actually lets the messages go downstream. So a very common mistake uh, that uh, people often make is uh, when they have any side effect in their do offense. So side effect essentially is if you are uh, doing some logging or making some external calls to an API. And um, so let's say you have put some logging in your do FN and uh, you may see multiple logs for the same message uh, in the logs. And then you may believe that uh, Dataflow is generating these so many duplicates. But uh, that's actually not true uh, because those are essentially retries that are happening. Uh, as I mentioned, retries do happen. The same message could be reprocessed multiple times, but then only one of them actually moves uh, downstream. So uh, you may see logs that uh, are being generated and showing that you that showing that you have multiple messages uh, or or multiple retries, uh, but that is. Uh, that is true that retries are happening, but then only one of those actually move forward uh, down in the pipeline. So as a system, a data flow, uh, like I mentioned, guarantees and exactly one's processing. So any duplicates, if you have any questions around if data flow generates duplicates in processing, that doesn't happen. Uh, and that's something that data flow takes care for you. Now, the fifth place and the last place where duplicates may appear is when we are writing to sync. So again, when uh, writing to things, uh, writes uh, can be retried, and uh, we may have uh, duplicate writes. So in this scenario, it is a responsibility of the sync actually to uh, detect these duplicates and handle them accordingly. Now, depending on the sync, uh, they may filter out these duplicates, they may overwrite it, or they may not do anything. And in that case, you may see duplicates in your sync. So in the next two slides, I'll actually uh, talk about two very common things that uh, we have, uh, we typically have on our streaming pipeline. One is BigQuery and the other is a file system. So, um, so whenever we are doing any uh, writes to BigQuery, if you're using streaming inserts, you have, and it's not specific to Dataflow, but in general, if you are writing to BigQuery using streaming and uh, inserts API, uh, there is an option for you to provide a unique identifier called insert ID. And if you are setting this value when you're writing to BigQuery, BigQuery is able to detect uh, duplicates that are arising from, uh, from duplicate writes and will do the deduplication. However, uh, this deduplication guarantee actually depends on the method or the API that you're using for BigQuery. Now, if we talk about the BigQuery IO that the Apache Beam SDK provides, uh, we have three methods of writing to BigQuery. So the first is file loads, second is streaming inserts, and the third, a very recent uh, method is the storage write API. So depending on the method you're using to write to BigQuery, uh, the duplication guarantee actually depends on that. So if you're using file inserts and storage write API, in the in only in these two methods, the deduplication is guaranteed. If you're using streaming inserts, that deduplication is best effort. So there is very small possibility that you may have duplicates uh, if you are using streaming inserts just by uh, having these uh, duplicate writes to the sync. Uh, the storage write API is something uh, that is uh, in preview. Um, and uh, this would be the recommended method uh, to write to BigQuery for streaming pipelines. So not only it offers a very high throughput, but also the, like I mentioned, the guarantee of deduplication. So this is um, something that uh, you may consider in your pipelines uh, once it is out of preview. Now let's look at some other sync. Uh, let's say we have a sync like uh, a file system or 
um, any any file based IO. Uh, so in this case, uh, also exactly once is guaranteed. So duplicates that are arising from writing to sync, if you're using any of these IOs, uh, that also guarantees an exactly once processing. The Apache Bing SDK provides uh, a bunch of file IOs and file systems um, IOs for you to write files. And um, all of them actually uh, does provide the exactly once guarantee and sort of handle duplicates that are arising at this fifth place. So uh, going back to the same architecture diagram, uh, we see that uh, we had five places where duplicates may originate. And for places uh, three, four, and five, uh, we talked about some of the functionalities that are there in Dataflow, PubSub, and BigQuery that um, sort of handle scenarios like this. So duplicates that are originating at the third, fourth, and fifth place are being taken care of by some of the functionalities that Dataflow, PubSub, and BigQuery provides. Now, uh, so this is a, this was the case for BigQuery. Of course, if you are not using BigQuery in a different sync, that depends on how that sync handles uh, duplicate writes. So as a developer, the only two places that we are left out is the first place and the, two, uh, the second place, uh, which is the source-generated duplicates and the publisher-generated duplicates. So uh, in the next few slides, I actually talk about how do we handle the first and second scenarios, what are the features that the Beam SDK provides, uh, and how you can leverage it. So if you look at the both these scenarios, right, uh, the source generated duplicates and the publisher generated duplicates, in both the scenarios, we have uh, two duplicate messages, which have different message IDs, and they also have uh, different published timestamp. So here um, I have an example of two such message. Uh, so we see that the message payload, which is the data field, is exactly the same. Uh, here the user had set some attribute named unique ID. Um, so this would also be the same. Uh, but because these were retried, they have a different message ID and also a different uh, publish timestamp. So for the next few slides, we'll discuss how do we handle these scenarios. So the first option is uh, to leverage uh, PubSub message attributes. Uh, some of this uh, content was already covered by Jeff on yesterday's talk, uh, uh, where he gave an example of his use case on how they were handling that, so uh, that you may find some of the content uh, very similar. So the first option uh, to handle these duplicates is the PubSub message attributes. So uh, like I mentioned, you have the option to set some attributes on the message when you're publishing. And then you can configure the data flow uh, when you're reading from PubSub to sort of leverage these attributes for deduplication. So what happens is that uh, the data flow will actually replace the default deduplication that it was doing using the message ID with this attribute. So, so if we uh, want to leverage, say, the unique ID attribute that we have set here, um, the data flow can leverage this for deduplication. Now, one caveat here, uh, here, here is that the uh, messages should have been published to the pub subtopic. Uh, sorry, the duplicate messages should have been published the, to the pub subtopic within uh, 10 minutes of each other. So if this condition holds true, uh, the data flow can guarantee a deduplication using this attribute. Unlike the, the default deduplication that data flow was doing using the message ID, there was no time constraint for that. Um, but here, when we are uh, when we're talking about using a custom attribute, uh, the duplicates should have been published within 10 minutes of each other. So let's look at how this looks like. So here is a snippet of the PubSub IO in Java and Python. Uh, so you would read from subscription. You also want to read messages with their attributes. Uh, so that's why we have the read messages with attributes. And then uh, there is a method called with ID attribute where you can specify the attribute name that you want Dataflow to leverage for this deduplication. So uh, it's, it's, it's a fairly simple approach, uh, which requires very less effort from developers' side and can uh, work really well for some cases. So let's look at some of the trade-offs that we have for this approach. 
So the first is the, the first con is that you have to have control over the publishing because you have to set the message attribute, uh, and this would be done uh, in the publisher client. So your publisher client should be able to uh, set these attributes on the fly when it's publishing. The the second is that uh, there is a constraint that the uh, messages should have been published to PubSub within ten minutes of each other. And this duration is something that uh, you cannot configure or change. One thing I want to mention is that earlier there was some error in the documentation page uh, where we talked about that the messages should be delivered within 10 minutes of each other. But that's actually not the case. And if you actually go on the documentation page now, uh, that's been rectified. And you will see that uh, these messages should have been published to pubs are within 10 minutes of each other. So if your published timestamp between the duplicates is within 10 minutes of each other, uh, PubSub will be able to leverage this uh, attribute for any, for any deduplication. Now let's look at uh, some, of the pro some of the pros. So there is no impact on latency. Uh, it's because the, uh, the we are not holding these messages for a certain time period and doing any deduplication or anything like that. So uh, there is no impact on the latency or, of your pipeline. Uh, and then there's no additional cost uh, in terms of processing cost um, that Dataflow will incur because Dataflow was already doing some deduplication using message ID. Now, instead of using the message ID, it's using the custom attribute. Now, uh, let's go to um, the second option that you have uh, is the deduplicate transform. So the DD duplicate transform that the Beam SDK provides is actually works uh, using the stateful API under the hood. And uh, here, what we do is that we essentially pass a P collection of key value pairs. Now, the key could be something that you can extract from the message payload, or you can generate on the fly. Uh, but so this gives you a lot of leverage on how you want to do the deduplication and what you want to do use to carry out uh, this deduplication. So essentially, you will have a key value pair. And then uh, under the hood, uh, you will have, so here, uh, if you look at the diagram here, we have these different uh, messages with color coded. So let's say we have the, the key as yellow, green, and orange. What will happen is that uh, all these messages with the same key will go on the same worker. And that worker will maintain a state or essentially a keep a track of uh, the keys it has seen. And this, uh, uh, this state is maintained for a certain duration, which you can configure. So there is a method called uh, with duration that you can use to set how long you want to store that state. So what will happen is that uh, if that worker gets the, uh, another message with the same key uh, within that duration, it will not. It will filter out that message and will not let it pass through the uh, downstream stages. So, if, if we just look in the diagram, we have uh, we had three keys with yellow, uh, two keys, two keys. Sorry, two messages with green key uh, and three messages with uh, red key. But then only one of them is. Uh, just a unique messages from each of these uh, keys is being passed by these stages. So you have a lot of control over uh, how how this deduplication work. You also have a lot of control over uh, what uh, field you want to use or what identifier you want to use uh, for 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 this use case. So let's look at uh, some of the trade-offs, uh, pros and cons for both the options. So for the for this option, I'm sorry. So, if you're looking at the uh, con, so the the main con that you have here in this approach is the data flow cost. So there is some cost associated with this. Uh, you will incur some additional charges because uh, the state is always stored in streaming engine if you're using that, and uh, streaming engine engine charges you based on the amount of data that you read and write. So because you would be doing these uh, lookups for each message uh, to check the state, uh, there you may see some slight uh, data flow cost uh, for using states under the hood and using streaming engine. However, in terms of uh, pros, you actually have a lot of control and flexibility on how you want to use it. So there, first, there is no impact on latency. 
because we're not holding messages and then doing any deduplication. It's just being is keeping a track of the state. Uh, and whenever there is a new message with the same key, it is just being filtered out. Then um, you also can leverage a unique identifier from the message payload itself. Uh, unlike the previous option where you had to set the attributes at the time of publishing and you have to have a control over publishing. In this method, even if there is a unique identifier in the message payload and you did not set it as an attribute when you were publishing, you can actually extract that field uh, and create a unique identifier on the fly uh, for you to do any deduplication. Uh, and then also you have full control over the deduplication window. Uh, so you can actually select a time period for which you want to keep that state and ensure that you don't have duplicates within time frame. So you can have it to one hour, five minutes, totally up to you uh, what you set it to. Unlike in the previous method, uh, there was a constraint that uh, the messages must have been published uh, within 10 minutes of each other. So let's look at the third option. Um, so the third option is fairly straightforward. You would actually, you can do a post-processing in sync. So this would involve running any scheduled back jobs uh, and do deduplication. And I think this was also the approach that uh, Jeff talked about in his talk yesterday, uh, where they were doing something similar. Now, uh, if we are actually having BigQuery as a sync, uh, I wanted to mention that you can actually create materialized views uh, on your base table. So this actually creates a real-time deduplicated data set for you in uh, as messages are being ingested. So you don't have to actually have all the orchestration to reach read these uh, tables and do the deduplication and a sort of uh, uh, schedule it at a certain interval. So this is fairly simple approach. If you are using BigQuery as a thing, uh, you can just create a materialized view on that table and then use that table for uh, for your purpose, uh, which will have already which will have the uh, deduplicated data already. Uh, one thing that uh, I want to mention is that the materialized view does not support a lot a lot of um, uh, SQL statements and functions. So you have to see if the SQL query that you're writing uh, is supported by materialized view uh, for you to be able to leverage it. So uh, let's talk about uh, some of what are the pros and cons for this third option. So, um, so the con is that there is some additional cost associated with materialized views. Um, so that is an additional cost for that. But then the other is you also have a complete deduplication guarantee. Uh, you don't have to worry about any orchestration or scheduling queries and things like that. So this is a specific case for BigQuery, but depending on the sync, um, things may may differ and might be different. So um, that's all that I had. So if we have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. And uh, one thing I also just want to mention is that uh, for most cases, like I would say almost 90% of the cases, uh, you can actually handle most of your deduplication needs using the first and second option and not having to um, create something too complicated by uh, yeah, like introducing any other uh, component in your pipeline. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions or any discussions topic. Uh, I think I finished a little earlier than the schedule time. So we can have some uh, break uh, before the next talks.